Okay, so uh, UML and this is a class diagram. Uh, we'll use them sparingly, but they can help you with uh, your homeworks for the tic-tac-toe. So we create a block, right? And then usually the class diagram is, is like this, right? The name of the class at the top. And then uh, plus sign indicates that it's a public, uh, has a public specifier. So int get balance is public. Void deposit is public and so is uh, withdraw. And for now, we're using integers just to keep it simple, right? If it has a minus sign, then then we know it's a uh, private access specifier, right? So, and I showed you this in in the introduction to abstraction, and that's how other classes see the bank account. And UML can help uh, in giving us a picture of how classes talk to each other. For example, if, and this class will create it later today, but if we want to create an ATM class without worrying about how you're going to code it, First thing we, we do, right, is well, how can they communicate with each other? How can they collaborate with each other? Like, so the ATM, we know it can, we can deposit and we can withdraw and we can retrieve balance. So for now, we'll just focus on, on displaying the balance. So we're at the ATM and then we're like, well, I want to, I want you to display my balance. Okay, so sorry. So then we are like, okay, so if I'm at the ATM, I need to display balance, and I will. Oh, sorry, another student needs to come in. Okay, okay, so void display balance and how can it collaborate with bank account? Okay, so if I want to display balance, I know the bank account has the balance variable here, but I know that I can use the get balance function to accomplish that. So I know that my ATM class can use get balance in this function to display the balance, right? And then in order for me to use ATM, I need a bank account uh, class variable. Okay, so and that's with us without like worrying about how are we going to code this, right? So notice how class diagrams can help us at least get an idea of how our program is going to work. So we'll come back to this toward the end of class when we write the code for the ATM piece, okay? Okay, so also let me come back to code and who are we? Dash one, right? So let me open, oops, let me open. This is ours. If I didn't get it mixed up again, so let me see everything's checked in. Let me look at the code here. Okay, yeah, so this is ours. So if we are in the bank account class and recall how uh, classes are loaded into memory. First, there's a space allocated for the main function. And then assuming the, ma the main function has the bank account object here. Hold on. Can you all hear background noise? I can't hear anything in the background. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, cool. Okay. I can hear it, so, but I'm glad you all can't hear it. Okay. So, where was I? Okay, so we load uh, the program. Main gets a regional memory. Okay. And then this statement, assuming it's in main. Yeah, I'll filter the noise out on YouTube. The bank account A 
is loaded here, right? But uh, the special variable that I want to introduce is known as this. Think in, in Python it was self, right? Self dot something that, that meant like this class. And I think this is also used in Java. I'm not 100% sure if it's in C sharp. I don't remember. Okay, so, so this pointer, when the class is in memory, we can say this something, like what's something, any of the public or private variables that belong to the class. And it's usually better if I show you with an example, right? So say we have a balance here. And then we're like, first of all, right, this is bad practice, right? I mean, we already have a class variable balance, but I, but I want to show you how uh, if we create a local variable here named balance in our compiler, will think we want to use this one and I can you can see that right like if we hover over it it's like oh into balance if I put my mouse over this one notice it's balance that belongs to bank account class so in situations like this especially like if the parameter and some class variable are named the same then we can we can say okay so I'm not gonna use this one that, that one's just for show okay but if I wanted to refer to the bank account, then I could say uh, something like this, right? So now notice it's like, okay, the balance that belongs to the bank account class. And if I, for example, do something else with this one, just to show you, right? Then this one is still this one right here. And you can tell because, it, because it's just saying like integer balance. And over here it's saying um, the balance that belongs to bank account, okay? Or the more common, we'll come back to this one when we uh, venture into inheritance. But for now, I just wanted to show you that that's one way to do it. But usually uh, we uh, do something like this and notice now when I do this and then uh, this arrow operator, it shows me the private and uh, public methods or, or functions or variables that belong to the class and then here I can just say uh, balance right so now it's it knows that I want to use the bank account balance variable okay and usually um, this is very common in constructors especially if uh, like for example this one this was named balance right then we would probably have to revert to that syntax that I showed you over here. Or sometimes, for some reason, you have two variables that are named the same in the function and the class, and this is how you can, can differentiate uh, them, okay? But I do not really need to keep this changed. I was just, because the book covers it, and if you read the book, and then you're like, well, I wonder why I didn't cover the this pointer, right? So that's the only reason I'm covering it. We'll cover it more as we uh, move into other concepts in this class, okay? Okay, uh, so no questions yet. Okay, so any questions? So ideally you would <clears throat> just let the, the instance of the bank account implicitly access the private uh, data is that correct? But you were giving the example in case there was only in case there was a like two balances. Is am I understanding that right? Yeah, like when you have name clashes, like sometimes the the class constructor or the are for some reason somebody named them the same. So then that's how you can differentiate them. And uh, and then always remember that if you want to refer to the class in memory, this is how you do it like with this and I just notice it's like okay so this class in memory and then you can select any but usually implicitly this will work as long as there's no name clashes all of I mean as we have it it'll work fine okay thank you yeah. okay okay so we move on I think in the in the last uh, lecture I was I showed you right let me look at the code here yep 
so I showed you that just because we create our own class doesn't mean that the value reference and cons reference concepts we learned don't apply to it. We can use them. And remember I showed you the example. So that's what I was supposed to talk about here. But I mean, I've already talked about it. So I'm not going to repeat it, OK? And just remember that once you create a user defined type, then all the rules that apply to all the other uh, uh, core verb, uh, core data types like uh, integer and float, and even the structures from the standard library like the string and the vector, they apply to objects we create too. Okay. Okay. So then, what do we have next? So static variable. So recall from uh, a previous lecture, we talked about, let me go to the stack here. I talked about static variables, where if you create this variable and use it in a function, then it'll persist, or it'll keep its current value after that function exits, and then when the when you execute that function again, it'll have the previous value. So it retains its value throughout the lifetime of the program. And it is read-write, right? So we can change it. And uh, the same thing can be done with a static variable that belongs to a class. Like, the static variable will, will keep its value even if that class is destroyed and a new class is created and say the value was 100, then the new class uh, value for the static variable will be also 100 so it won't be reset to zero so it keeps its value across uh, objects uh, that come and go okay just like we did for the functions and to show that example let me come back over here I'll uh, go to the header and then I'll say uh, let me so this was causing confusion to some students yesterday, so I'll make sure this is customer balance, okay? And then we say uh, static bank balance. Actually, we need a data type, right? Otherwise, we're going to get smacked in the hand. Okay, so there we go. So static int bank balance. This is the total of all bank customer balances okay so so if we have if this bank only has two customers and their total balance is ten thousand dollars and uh, then the bank balance is ten thousand dollars right one customer may have uh, five thousand and the other may also have five thousand but the bank balance would be ten thousand so that's what this static uh, variable is keeping track of okay so then we also need a way to retrieve that balance so then we can say uh, static int get bank balance and we can go ahead and just simply define our function here since it's only a one statement function so we can just say return balance Notice here how we initialize integer to zero. If we try to do that here, then it doesn't like us. It's like we can't do that. So we have to we have to initialize static variables a different way. So we can go to the bank account.cpp and we can do it right here before the free functions. And the syntax uh, can be confusing, OK? So we say int bank account uh, bank balance. We're going to say 0, OK? So we're going to initialize it to 0. In reality, like we would have to go like get the lump sum total from somewhere and then initialize this one, right? But we're just going to initialize it to 0 here. So this should be OK. So let me verify the syntax, right? So we come here to source. 
examples module 6 bank and then I'll simply right click and just do build right when you select build then it just checks your syntax and builds the executable it doesn't run it but if as, as long as you get exit code 0 you're okay so meaning I didn't break anything so how do we test this well we can use a, a test case right so we can come here and we can say uh, let's create a test case test uh, okay and we can say okay I want to create a bank account object give it a name and then I can deposit something and then I can say okay require account dot get bank balance equal 50 okay and then I can go ahead and try to run this test case and let's see what happens so we come back and we look for the test folder and examples I was grading a lot of homeworks today so I think that's why I'm going to the homework folder okay so run in terminal and it's building and it's still building and linking okay so we failed okay which is which is okay so then we come back over here and uh, we know that we created the variable we initialized it to zero but nowhere nowhere are we updating it okay so if we look at our header file where can where does bank balance where does balance get updated gets updated and deposit and withdraw okay so if we are keeping a total of all balances then we know that oh, okay so we need to maybe modify bank balance here so then we can say uh, bank balance plus equal amount and then we can do the same thing in here and we can say bank balance plus, uh, minus equal amount afterward we can go ahead and try our test case again and uh, well we made the change but we failed right but uh, actually it's kind of good that that it failed because that drives my point home that the static variable will keep its value over the lifespan of classes that are created and destroyed in our program and in our test cases all these test functions have instances of bank account so what we are getting over here at the bottom is the total of all 
the values in here okay does that make sense any questions sir so if we go ahead and, and draw a picture right so let me come here I'll just make up some number, okay? So if we create an object and the static variable in there has a value of 40, and then this one's removed from memory, but then another one's created, and this one adds uh, maybe like 50 to the static object, so now we have 90, and this one's then removed from the stack, and then if another one's created, and then this one uh, subtracts 10 from it, then we have 80. But notice that the static variable is persisting or keeping its value regardless of what's happening to our objects in memory. So that's why when we uh, run our test case, all these test cases, notice we're creating instances of the bank account and we are making deposits and withdrawals and what have you so then the total tabulated value is 330 okay so I guess how can we how can we prove that well we can go up here and start adding uh, the balances right but I'm not gonna do it I'm just gonna assume that it's doing its job however uh, I don't think we got all the places where we update balance, okay? So we have a uh, balance beginning zero, balance beginning at 100 in the constructor, uh, zero, 100, zero, zero, 100, zero, zero, zero. Oh. So there's three cases where we have a bug, well, purpose bug, pur purposeful bug, right? And can somebody tell me where we can fix that so that we can account for bank accounts that don't start at zero? I kind of stated the answer while I was talking. So if you were paying attention, then you should be able to answer that question. Should do it in the constructor. Yes, in which one? Let me go to the header. In which constructor? In the constructor that accepts the uh, integer argument. Yep. So right here, right? So we are updating balance. However, we're not. Obviously, like this is a very uh, narrow scoped example, right? Like, if we wanted to use this like in the real world scenario, we would have to make sure <laughs> that we wouldn't be double adding uh, bank balances, right? But for this example, we're okay. So then here we can say uh, bank balance uh, plus equal. Uh, we can say balance or B, it doesn't matter. Like, because by the time this statement executes, this has already occurred, okay? So we can go uh, bank underscore balance plus equals B or bank underscore balance plus equal balance and it'll still be okay. So now if we go back and run our test case, we know it's still gonna fail, but we wanted to account for all the balances in our test cases. Okay, so it's linking. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. Okay, so at least now we are, are covering 
our basis, right? If I go back to the CPP, like if we really wanted to make this uh, correct, then then we would have to initialize this to some value. And then once we did that, then we could assume that we didn't need to do this addition right here. Because if it's already an existing customer and this code had some other code that would get like the total bank balance, say like of 10,000, like I said before, then when we create an instance, we don't, we wouldn't need to do this because that balance has already been tabulated with whatever value we got here, right? Which would be 10,000, I guess, if I go with that same example. So if I create a bank account instance for one customer and start with 5,000, then I wouldn't have to add it again because then I'd be counting an additional 5,000, okay? So, but for this case, it's okay just to show you that we have to be careful with how we structure our code, okay? So questions with what we've done so far? Okay, so, so far, no questions. So we go back to the test case, and uh, if we were testing a static value, <clears throat> then we would probably have like an Excel or a calculator and just count the number of objects we're creating and keep a tabulation of the balance manually, and then we would put that value right here. And if we were like, well, it, it should be 630, right, once we did all our addition. And then we would run our code, and that's how we could get the, the value for for this guy, right? We would just have to go through each of these uh, test cases and tabulate the balances to get this number. And then we'd run the code to see if the code's running as uh, we expect it to run, right? So we can, I'm not going to do that, okay? So we can go here. But that's usually like how the test cases are written. Any questions on static uh, variables for classes? Did I change it? Okay, I did, right, so it was just not updating. So let me, up arrow, space, dash, s, enter. We always wanna see this, right? So we should never trust ourselves, so then we're like, okay, I just wanna make sure. So test aesthetic bank balance is the last one, and we're good, right? And notice again how our test cases are also keeping us in check, making sure that as we add code, uh, it can check existing code and we can also check new code and if something breaks we'll know right away so that's the value of test cases i'm pretty sure by now you should know and by next week with next week's homework when you determine who wins in the tic-tac-toe game then you'll be like oh so now i understand the value of <clears throat> test cases any questions here if we well, in this case, uh, if we put this test case at the top and delete it here, or keep, um, or just put a copy up there, a copy. I just put top just to make it give it a different name. So obviously here uh, we have zero and fifty, so we would <clears throat> have fifty. And I'm just gonna keep this one at the bottom. Okay, but uh, this one will probably change now to what uh, six eighty. Oh, let's see. Okay, so run.
Yeah, so it's key, if it's keeping its value across instances of classes that come and go, then it's just a matter of doing the math for this uh, examples. So it's a building. Right, so uh, 680, I didn't change it on purpose, right? But we should change it and it will be 680. So now we have a very clear picture that, oh yes, yeah, the static value, static variable is keeping its value across instances and in uh, classes that come and go for our program. And the test cases as a whole is one program, right? All those test cases is, is one instance of our program. Loads into memory every single test case runs and then our program exits so that's why it keeps its value across all those instances And linking, and notice we're green, up arrow space, dashes, enter, and now we have uh, 680 and 680. Okay, so questions on static variables. Okay, so no questions, so we go back to our agenda, and uh, now we have uh, friends of classes. So first of all, like let's go back and look at our header. So we know that private members of a class are protected by the class, right? I would as a student I would have questioned this one like I would have been like hey wait a minute what what's going on? what's going on there right uh, isn't this private or, or I mean what's going on like is this considered uh, part of the class or what right well in this case uh, it is right however can other functions access private data. From what we've learned so far uh, with encapsulation rules or principles, we know that we don't want other objects to access our uh, private data. However, C++ allows us to write some code that will allow a function or a class. We'll do the function today, we'll do the class in the next lecture allow a function or a class to access the private uh, variables okay and uh, to do that we have to create what is known as a friend function right so the class is like okay that uh, function is a friend so then it can access the private uh, data okay remember we we can still have control like how? Well, we can use uh, the const uh, values, right? We can be like, okay, so I'm going to let you access the data, but I don't really trust you, so I'm just going to make you uh, access or have you access it read only. You won't be able to modify any, any of my values. And also, a friend function is not a class function. It's a free function. It just happens to be a friend of the class. And one difference between a free function and a friend function is the friend function, we have to define it within the class scope. Notice this one's over here. They're outside the class scope. Right? So they are uh, free functions. But the friend function, we have to define it somewhere in here, like this, the header. And then we can write the 
implementation in the CPP file for that. And one simple example we can have here is, well, let's uh, create a function display balance. That is a friend function of bank account and then see if it lets us access private data, right? So we have display balance defined down here already. So maybe we should name this new function friend underscore display balance, right? Just to differentiate between the two of them. Okay, so enough. Uh, then let's go ahead and write some code. So we have to use the keyword friend, and then we can say void get, or not really, we say friend, set what the class's name was going to be, right? Display balance. And then we can say, okay, const bank account object. And this is the function signature, right? And it is recommended that uh, we put the friend function away from public or private access specifiers. Although we should know that if we don't, if we don't use if we don't use private or public, and then we write class variables, then they're considered private, right? So if we put this guy over here, then C makes that private. But it's always better to explicitly state what you are doing right so then we put it under private okay? because that makes it easier for for everyone in the long run no it's not convention i just happen to have this guy here so i i just named it friend display balance okay so when you write the code in the CPP, and I think Timothy stopped by my office yesterday and he was asking me about const and I'm like, well, const, you don't include it in the CPP. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute, what am I saying? You do include it in the CPP. It's the friend keyword. So notice here I have the friend keyword. And then when I am writing the code in the CPP, then I don't, I don't include friend over here. So friend uh, free function, meaning I don't have to put the friend keyword right here. Okay. I just do this and then the compiler will know. Number one, what does this semicolon mean? It's, it's a promise to the compiler. We're telling the compiler, this is the function signature or header. Um, I'll write the code later on. So then the compiler looks for the code and finds the matching header. And it's like, oh, okay, this is the friend function. And here we'll, we'll, we'll say, okay, see out. And then we'll say friend display balance, just to show you that this function is executing. And then notice the syntax here, account get balance. It has to use this function right here to get a copy of balance. What we will do in this statement is simply say, well, I don't want to use the function. I should have access to private class members or variables. So I want to access that directly. How do I do that? Well, I have to provide the class name first and then I can say dot and notice it gives me access to the private variables. Notice right here, I have to use the function. Over here, I don't have to use the function. I can just directly access the value. However, I can't do any funny business, right? I can't try to modify it because I'm uh, making it accessible with uh, const reference, meaning they can access the original location and memory for my object, but they do not have the permission to modify it. And that's what we want, right? Since we are saying here, display balance. So we don't want them to mess around with our, our variables, okay? Questions here? Okay, so no questions.
Okay, so how do we use this? Well, since we're not modifying anything, we can't really create a test case for it. However, we can use it in main. So we can say, okay, well, I want to use it here. Friend, display balance. It takes a bank account as its parameter. So I can say account. And then I can go and run that program. So notice right here, friend display balance. So we were able to execute this function right here. C++, uh, when it's running, it's like, oh, okay, you want to use this friend function. And then it's okay. It lets us access the private data member directly. And like for object-oriented developers that are purists, meaning they want to always like keep the encapsulation of a class um, to the highest uh, integrity, they don't like friend functions. And then there's developers who like friend functions, right? Because well, it gives them access to private data members. Uh, if you work at a C++ shop, when you get the, the programming guidelines, you'll know if you can do this or not, right? So I uh, would say that if it was maybe, I'm not 100% sure, but maybe legacy programmers like the friend function and maybe like modern purist object-oriented developers are like, no, we can't use friend functions, right? But it's a feature of the language and it's covered in the Gaddis book, so that's why I covered it here. Questions? Okay. Notice how we are uh, developing our class, right? We started with with get balance, and we progressed to, to uh, make our class give it more functionality, right? As the lectures go on. And we'll continue to do that, right? So if you have questions, please do not hesitate to. Uh, uh, I think, I think, uh, I think we do. I don't remember. I think we do. We do. We we do. But that'll be like three or three or four assignments down the road. So for now, don't worry about it. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about UML, we talked uh, briefly about this pointer, we, we talked about static variables, the friend function is private because it is not marked with an access specifier. No, no, it's not, no, I mean if it was private we wouldn't be able to access it in main, right? It's just a free function. It's a free function. So and notice here, it, we have proof that it's a free function because we don't have to link it to like the bank account. We don't have to say like, hey, you are from the bank account. No, we don't have to do anything like that. So what I was trying to say when I was here is that if, if we don't put an access specifier and we just write something like this, then this one right here is considered private. But that doesn't apply to the friend function. When the compiler sees this, it's like, oh, okay, this is a friend function, so access specifiers do not apply to it. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. Pretty cool stuff, right? Okay, so what next? Object composition and header guards, right? So, so header guards are important. It's uh, if we well, probably you don't remember, right? But I'll refresh your memory. Uh, when I was talking about how the compiler gets our source code and then starts t uh, creating a very large file, and then it compiles that file into machine language, uh, it'll do it. It'll do whatever we say. So if we're like, hey, include 
bank account in one file and then we have another file include bank account so now it has two include two copies of bank account in that large file and then we do one more then there's three copies of bank account in that large file and then uh, but the compiler once it starts trying to compile it, it'll be like hey wait a minute bank accounts been defined once already and you're trying to define it again like you can't do that you can't have two user defined types that are named the same that's where header guards come into play so if we come back here we can say well this is a class and I don't want to have issues in the future especially since we're going to use the bank account in the ATM object so then we add what are known as header guards and that's very simple we just simply say if not defined and then usually it's the name of the class Uh, something like this right so underscore header then go ahead and define this macro or this uh, global variable and then at the end right after we'll go ahead and oh, it doesn't matter those are free functions what did I do yesterday uh, oh, we'll do it over here and if okay so now if we include bank account in three different files, the first time the compiler encounters this header file, if not defined bank account, no, it's not defined yet. Okay, define it and then include all of this into that large file that you're getting ready for compilation. And if, and then it runs into another include in a different file, then it'll run the first statement if not defined oh bank accounts already defined bank account underscore age so then it doesn't include it include that uh, this code again and then we won't get that error that's saying that the bank account objects already been defined more than once so so that's why he he header guards are very important so we have to make sure that from now on anytime you create a class even if you don't think you're going to be including it all over the place Save yourself some time and make sure you at the header guards, okay? So I think for the tic tac toe application, I don't ask you to to write them until we add the second class, right? So meaning, oh, so I'm gonna add a second class. Yes, I'm gonna add the ATM object today. So when you add the second class, I think is a tic tac toe manager, and that class is gonna be keeping score of all the game instances. In, in the tic-tac-toe games and it'll have a vector of tic-tac-toe games right so that's uh, when you'll need this header guards but I won't jump ahead too far right so okay so any questions on header guards right if you don't understand what I just said then at least understand that if you create a class you need these two statements here if not define bank account underscore age define it and then end if and then you'll save yourself a lot of time in the future, okay? Okay, so we go back here and then we go to the UML chart. And I was talking about this diagram at the beginning of the class lecture. And I was saying, like, class diagrams help us because we can, if the requirement is that we need to use the bank account in the ATM, ATM object and we can look at the outside view of bank account and we know that we can get a balance we can deposit or withdraw and we're like okay so for now I'll start slow and I'll say well let me create the ATM class that uh, has a public function void display underscore balance and knowing the bank account class has a get balance function then I know that in my ATM class, I need to have a bank account instance or variable that I can use in the display balance. Okay, so that's what we will do right now. Any questions with, with what we're trying to do? If the header files are in different folders, it depends. It depends on, on like if you're using CMake. Remember, I ran I ran into that issue a few lectures ago, 
where two files had the same name and I had to put the absolute path to the header file to choose the one I wanted to use. That way uh, the compiler wouldn't be getting confused. So that's what you would have to do. You would just have to put the absolute path from uh, your source code folder. That way the compiler knows which one you want to use. Yeah. Okay. So what else do we need before we go and write code? Uh, so we have display balance, bank account. Where's my pen? Let me. Oops, Control Z. Forgot to click the pointer. The marker. Here we go. So then I know that if I have this bank account object, I prefer to init get it initialized, right? For now, we're going to take the easy way out. And then we'll modify this ATM class in the future, right? But for now, we'll be like, okay. So what I know so far is that I can get a uh, an instance of bank account through the constructor. And it'll work for this example, but if you really think about it, that's a flawed concept. Because usually the ATM runs 24-7. So if we keep the constructor, which we will right now, we will always have to be restarting the ATM to get a new customer. Okay? We will fix that in the, in the future, but for now, we'll be like, okay, so I know I need an ATM constructor and I will uh, have a bank account uh, where is that reference uh, okay something like that right a reference okay and we have one constructor okay so then we're like okay so I think now I am ready to write some code I can go to uh, this piece right here. I can go over here and then I can come here and I'm like, okay. So I know that from now on, anytime I want to create a class, header guards. If not defined, ATM header. And usually that that's the, the recommended method to do, right? Like, I guess if uh, we're going to be deploying our code, then we would probably have like, like our company name here, right? Like maybe company name or something. That way it wouldn't uh, clash in the future with other classes that would have the same uh, name, right? Here the same variable name, but for now we're okay. Okay, and then end if. This are header guards, okay? And we write the class code within the header guards, define and end if statements. So here we can say class ATM. Again, please don't forget that semicolon, okay? It'll give you a big headache, right? Because you're going to be like, my code's right, my functions look good, access specifier looks good. Why is it telling me that, you know, something's wrong? So please don't forget this. Okay, so we will have a private bank account. We need to include bank account here. We don't want to create a copy this time. We want to reference, so we'll just say account. And uh, then we have public specifier. And we'll have the ATM constructor. Bank account. Account. And then we'll say, OK, when you execute, initialize account with a. OK, so. We have a reference and we say, okay, when you execute, 
initialize this account with the incoming bank account value okay and then if we go back to our uml what else do we need we let go okay so let's uh create this function display balance so we're like okay so void and display balance since we are just displaying balance this is a very good uh, candidate for the const so that we are not able to modify the value and we can go to the atm a cpp file make sure we include ATM okay so again just to make sure that we understand this this will be considered a free function if we want it to be part of the class we have to specify the class name with that double colon okay once we do that notice it's like oh okay I know I know what you're saying now I know what you're trying to tell me okay so ATM I need include IO stream. Go back to ATM using C out and then I can say balance balance what account, right? Which account? This account right here. Okay count dot get balance maybe a new line here and now we have an ATM class that leverages an existing class and we're kind of like making a very dumbed down version of an ATM machine okay oh, questions here Okay, so no questions. One question I would have asked is uh, like how how is this working? Like if I was you know a student, I'd be like, wait, wait a minute. Okay, a reference, reference. Okay, so then I guess this is pointing to some other object in some other code maybe like in main so we come over here this is an existing bank account so then I'd be like oh okay so maybe I, when I pass it in then I'll be referencing this directly right so but if you understand that then you probably if you understood that then that maybe that's why you're not asking right maybe you just don't know what to ask but that's what I would have been like uh, getting clarification on okay so how do we use this so let's go to our so how do we use this guy well we have to create an instance of ATM and for the moment we are forcing users of the ATM object to give us a bank account instance okay when I add the other code that's gonna make this better you'll be you'll be like okay so now I know why you started easy and then like we'll make it better okay so but for now just let's just go simple okay so I say that we need to create an ATM object and I need to pass in an account and of course I need to help the compiler by including the ATM header file once I do that, then I'm good. And afterward, I can say, well, ATM dot display balance. Okay, so what's going to happen? Well, let's run it. Oh, 
so we have a balance of 100 right which is this statement but maybe let's just be more explicit and let's put ATM balance just to make sure that it is running that class function and then we scroll down a little bit up oh it's right here right so ATM balance on so notice how we are collaborating with two classes now we have uh, the ATM object that requires a bank account object now to be functional and this is known as a dependency right so the ATM depends on the bank account class so uh, questions here Okay, so no questions so far. Uh, can we test the ATM class? Well, this is returning void, and we are not modifying anything. And we've already tested the bank account class functionality, so we should be okay. Like. Number one, we can't test it because this is void. But number two, this is con. So if the bank account test cases are passing, then we can feel very, very uh, confident that our ATM object is going to work. And that's usually how how uh, the unit testing works, right? Like I mean, bank account is already nicely tested. ATM's just a proxy between the customer or and the customer in the bank account, right? Just like the teller was. So that's, uh, we're okay. Okay, so let me go back here to the agenda and uh, private functions. Okay, let me see. When the bank account in private every time does that initialize in this is a bank account? No, so let me come here. So the question is is this creating an instance? And remember how references work. References are clones of something. Meaning that they they can't stand alone. Uh, so, so a uh, reference uh, to a class points to an already existing class, right? So say we had a bank account A, which I guess I removed the code. Then, uh, and if we say, okay, B equals A now, and B was a reference, then B is not its own class. It's pointing to an already existing class. So if we come back and look at this code, we can conclude that this is not your typical variable. When the class runs, the class will not initialize this to something. But what it'll do is it'll be like, okay, you need to initialize me to something. And that something better come in the constructor. If it doesn't come in the constructor, I'm gonna send I'm gonna create a syntax error and let you know. But we're like Yes, I know that. So I'm passing in a reference to an account in the constructor and I'm initializing this account to an already existing object, bank account, right? So if we come back and assuming, uh, let me get the eraser here and let's keep that. Okay, so. Uh, and let's remove that. Okay, so we have a, uh, in main we have a bank account. Bank account. Uh, account. So assuming uh, 
it's placed somewhere here, right? So then this would be the region for account. And our bank account object, uh, not bank, ATM object needs an account. So this exists already. So we're like, oh, how convenient. Let me pass you in. So now our reference that lives in the ATM object account reference is like, okay, so I'm pointing to an existing reference, which is this guy, right? So, so that's what's happening. It's only creating the bank account instance and then account that lives in in here is pointing to this instance right here. Okay, so it's not creating two variables. It's creating one variable here, our code is, and then our reference is just pointing to that existing variable. Does that make sense? Yeah. You see, that's, that's what I was saying, like, um, like if I was a student, that's what I, I'd be like, hey, wait a minute, what's happening here? Like I thought references were clones to something. And then, so I'm glad someone asked, right? Because it's only creating a, a reference to an existing variable, which is this guy right here. Okay, so we will continue developing a simple ATM object, right? It's not gonna be anything sophisticated, but it'll kind of at least give us an idea of how you could develop an ATM model, right? Any other questions? Uh, can it modify instance, right? Well, since we don't have const, we can modify it, but for now, since we only have this function and we have it const, it can't be modified. And if you think about it, we cannot make it const because the ATM object makes deposits and withdrawals. But we always say like, unless you know that you wanna modify the data, then use const. In this case, we know we do not wanna modify the data because the function tells us display balance. We're like, oh, okay, I just wanna display the balance. So just to protect my uh, da data, I'm going to make it const. Okay, but if we, when we create the deposit and withdraw functions, then then we'll be able to uh, modify them, and that's okay because we know that's the ATM's job, right, to update the balances. Okay, so let me uh, stop here. You have a short assignment; it shouldn't be hard, and this one is. That we all apologize for the last time. I think I just gave everybody a 10, right? For the last one. So.